The exploits of the Knights of St. John during the Middle Ages is one of the greatest stories of faith, courage, and endurance since biblical times. Three times, a few hundred knights took their stand against the most powerful armies on earth. Outnumbered by as many as a hundred to one, we resolve to keep our vows and to never retreat before the enemies of the cross. We injured some of the most terrible sieges and human wave assaults in the history of warfare. But we simply could not be dislodged from the grounds that we had claimed for the kingdom of God. I know because I was there. My name is Alistair Clyde. I hailed from Scotland. And I was the standard bearer for the Grand Master of the Order of St. John. Our vow was that we would never retreat before the enemies of the cross. We became the Knights of St. John, and we were a symbol of hope for the sick and the wounded. We were known as the Hospitallers. We were founded to bring healing, but as the conflict between Christianity and Islam escalated, we needed to establish a military arm devoted to the protection of our people against the bands of outlaws that roamed the land. But we never forgot that our first mission was to serve the sick and the wounded. And since we did everything that we set our hands to with all our hearts, we accomplished far more than even we envisioned or planned. And even though there was no great military genius amongst our ranks, we won seemingly supernatural victories by simply keeping our word. And thus, our hearts were united with our deeds. And these truly noble men were able to defeat the most powerful armies on earth. We were the sons of noble families from all different nations of Europe. And even though many of these nations were at war with each other, we never experienced a serious division within our own ranks. And through all of the discord that was experienced by our home nations, we kept our focus on whom the real enemy was and maintained unity with each other. So, allow me to tell you my story. It was 1565, and the fate of all Europe hinged on the tiny island of Malta. The Turkish Ottoman Empire ruled the Muslim world, and they had plans to conquer Europe as well. Europe was, for its own part, completely at odds amongst its various kings, and they were constantly fighting one another. The Turkish general was a man named Mustafa Pasha. He knew that before he conquered Europe, he must first capture the tiny island of Malta, and this would be necessary to protect his supply routes. Malta at the time was held by my order of just over 500 knights and an additional 4,000 local troops. Pasha had assembled a mighty fleet of ships to conquer Malta first and then move to the conquest of Europe. His fleet was the largest that had ever sailed the Mediterranean Sea. The masts of the ship seemed endless as they crept across the water. The Turks landed tens of thousands of men on the beaches of Malta. They planned to conquer the island within a few days. Thousands of Turkish troops were religious fanatics who were eager to die in battle. Most of Europe settled back, prepared to witness the inevitable destruction of the brave order of the Knights of St. John. The Turks eventually conquered the small fortress of St. Elmo on the island of Malta, and this forced all of the remaining defenders still alive to flee to the last remaining fort, St. Anglo. Our leader was 70-year-old Jean Parisot de Lavallee, 
He had formerly been a galley slave of the Turks. He held the fort against impossible odds, while surrounded and outnumbered. The siege that the Turks expected to take days went on for months. And the Turks brought with them the most powerful artillery known in the world at that time. The constant artillery barrage on Fort St. Anglo went on day and night. The Turks launched wave after wave of soldiers in an attempt to overrun the walls of the fort, yet each time as though by some miracle. The assault was ultimately repelled. And finally, the Turkish general ignited vast amounts of explosives under the walls of the fort. The explosion that shattered all sounds of battle and savagely put an end to many of my brothers now mercilessly displayed a huge gaping hole in our wall. The wall was strewn with the bodies of our gallant defenders. Meanwhile, the blast had also broken the spirits of the knights who were still alive. They crawled, walked, or ran in panic away from the wall, many of them into the fort in a hopeless attempt to escape our impending doom. I watched as the Turkish general gave the final hand signal to advance his men through the breach in our wall. And through all of the panic, the sounds, smoke, horrific battle scenes, and chaos, there was one fact that the Turkish general had not considered. He overlooked my 70-year-old leader, who would not easily accept defeat. And from across the courtyard, through a cloud of spent gunpowder. My leader studied the new breach in his wall. He watched in sorrow as we ran, stumbled across the courtyard, trying to escape in panic. The battle was obviously over and the Turks would be powering through the wall in a matter of minutes. But my leader, my leader resolutely moved toward the breach. He pushed his way through the waves of my fleeing comrades in the opposite direction. The old knight rubbed the smoke and the dust from his forehead, tears flowing from his eyes as he stopped to pick up a helmet that lay on the ground. The shield bearer and myself watched in amazement as the old man daringly climbed up the broken wall. And just then, he stopped to pick up a discarded sword. By all that is holy, I exclaimed, he is going toward the breach. Let us go die with him, the shield bearer returned as we rushed to catch up with him. And as we stumbled up the ruins of the wall, our army stopped running the other direction. They looked over their shoulders at our commander, and he was now standing with the discarded sword in hand squarely in the middle of the breach. We reached our commander, breathless, and willing ourselves to be courageous as we stood and beheld 200,000 Turkish soldiers marching toward the three of us. Can you imagine? It was an endless forest of spears. I knew the three of us would die, but we would die sword in hand defending Christian soil. And then, a moment later, a mighty roar resonated from the fort. And the rest of the 
story is where legends are made. All of the knights in the forge have been inspired as we watch this elderly lion-hearted man approach the wall. The knights stopped running. Each of the men in the fort picked up a weapon, turning to stand beside their leader. And the mighty roar of power rose up from the throats of its defenders. Soon we found ourselves running by sheer momentum through the hole in the wall and into the Turks. The Turks stopped. They were confused. Ilavale was wounded, but the old warrior stood his ground. And from the breach in the wall, he shouted, I will never retreat! The Turks were routed. As we poured through the wall, and the Turks turned to flee in utter confusion and disbelief. Malta was held. Europe was saved. One man changed history. Taking the position atop the castle wall, he greatly inspired all of us around him. And as a result, we held the line in our darkest hour. The final result was not just victory for the Knights of St. John, but a victory for all of Europe. God only needs one man, one man who has no excuses no matter how difficult and overwhelming the battle is. Difficulty is the excuse history never accepts. One man to stand, as Archimedes has said, give me a place to stand and I'll move the world. We only need one man to stand in every generation and we can expect God to give victory. One man to stand against all oppression. One man to stand for justice. One man to stand against all corruption and lies. God only needs one man to reveal his majesty, power, and glory in a dark world. Thornton Wilder said, I know that every good and excellent thing stands moment by moment on the razor edge of danger and must be fought for. Oswald Chambers declared, the tiniest detail in which we obey has all the omnipotent power of the grace of God behind it. God is saying in Ezekiel 22, I looked for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the breach on behalf of the land so that I would not have to destroy it. Will you be that man? and stand in the breach against all odds and save a generation and an entire nation for his glory. Will you be that man? Patriots! Hello, citizens! Let's give them a round of applause! 